Welcome to Canada Week. You are gonna wanna grab a fork and dig right in because today we are making poutine. Hey everyone, welcome to The Foreign Fork. My name is Alexandria and this is The Foreign Fork Kitchen where we are cooking one meal from every country in the world. And today we're making a specialty from our neighbors to the north, Canada, and we're having poutine, which, oh my gosh, is delicious and so fun to make. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make the poutine gravy first and then we're gonna assemble it all at the end. So to start making the gravy, I have one tablespoon of olive oil into a pot that we're heating up over a medium high heat. One pound of beef chuck that I've cut up into really small pieces. Now these, you're gonna want these to be bite-sized pieces because they're gonna be sitting on your fries. So cut them up as small as you can. And we're gonna cook this beef chuck for about five to seven minutes or so until all of the beef browns. Poutine is such a unique dish from Canada and one of the things that makes it so unique is some of the stories and theories about where it came from because there are a few. One of my favorites is that poutine was invented in 1957 when a customer visited a restaurant in Warwick, Quebec. And all of the um, things that he'd ordered, the fries, the gravy, and the cheese curds got thrown into his to-go bag together and got kind of mixed up. And when he opened the bag and looked inside, he exclaimed the word poutine, which means that his to-go order was a mess. The other theory is that poutine was invented by Jean-Paul Roy, the owner of the restaurant Le Roy Jusep, when uh, he noticed that all of his customers were just of their own accord combining the three ingredients together on their plates. So eventually he put the combination on his menu and then later he patented the idea. Once your beef is browned, then we're gonna add our next ingredient, which is five tablespoons of butter. It can be softened or cold, it doesn't matter. Um, you're just going to mix it over the beef until it all melts together. In between browning the beef and adding the butter, you can drain the beef if you'd like, but I choose to leave it in there because that's all of the delicious flavor and the fat that's gonna make the uh, gravy really delicious and thick and yummy. My butter is melted, so now I'm gonna add, I have one small onion that I diced, so I'm gonna add that into the pot too and cook until the onion turns translucent. Maybe about like five minutes or so. Once your onions have started to cook down, uh, then you're gonna add some flour. So I have three tablespoons of flour in here that I'm gonna sprinkle over the contents of the pot and mix it together. So now you can see the beef and the onions and the flour all kind of came together to form a little bit of a paste. And I'm gonna let this cook for about one minute just to get the flour taste out of this. And then we're gonna add the beef broth. Now I'm gonna add one quart of beef broth, which is four cups that I'm gonna put in here and whisk it all up, whisk it together. And we're gonna let this simmer for about 15 or 20 minutes and eventually it's going to thicken into a gravy. Now you may need, uh, depending on how much juice was released from your beef when you were um, sauteing it and those kinds of things, you may need to add a little bit more um, flour into this mixture to get it to thicken up. I normally need to. In that case, I do about um, three tablespoons of flour to about four tablespoons of water mix it up so that the flour dissolves into the water and then pour it into the pot after about 10 minutes. That way if it needs to thicken, it has time to do so. Once it's finally reached your liking, then we're gonna add some seasonings. So I have three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and then black pepper, fresh cracked black pepper and mix it all up again. Now I do wanna mention that at this point, you pretty much have enough beef gravy to feed an army. So you can freeze it for Thanksgiving if you want, you can make so much poutine if you'd like, or you can always cut this recipe in half too, if you're gonna be making smaller batches. Our gravy is done, so now it's time to assemble our poutine. I do have some french fries here that I've already made. If you want the full recipe for this, I have an entire video on how I go through step by step on how to make the fries. The recipe is actually for Belgian frites, so you can go and check that out if you want more in-depth instructions. You can also, if you want, use store-bought frozen fries, but I always recommend the fresh ones because it just adds to the flavor, it's so delicious. The other ingredient that I have is fresh cheese curds. I have about five ounces of cheese curds here, but honestly, you just measure with your heart on that one. You can use as much cheese curds as you want and I will not judge you for it. We're gonna ladle the gravy over the fries and then we're gonna sprinkle the cheese curds on top. I'm using plain cheese curds right now but sometimes I like to use chive flavored cheese curds or um, garlic flavored cheese curds. You can use anything that you can find in the grocery store that sounds delicious. I'm sure it will be good on top of this poutine. And now you have your poutine, your mess on a plate, but it is the most delicious mess you're ever gonna eat, I guarantee it. If you want the written instructions for the poutine gravy, you can find it at the link in the description of this video, but I'm also gonna leave instructions 
teaser to you about how to make the homemade french fries. So if you want to put this whole ensemble together, you'll find instructions for both of that in the description of the video. Don't forget to check out all the other recipes that I have on my channel. There's food from all around the world so that you can experiment. And don't forget to put some culture in your kitchen this week. Thanks for watching.